99% done. There is only a little bit left at my old apartment and I am, I am mostly moved in. You can still see I got a ton of boxes over there, but I've got lights here. I've got, you know, the camera, it's gonna film that way. So it's going. But today I wanna talk about the future and what's happening with technology. But before I do, let's go back, a little bit back in time to Charlottesville. After Charlottesville, the not neo-Nazi white nationalist website, The Daily Stormer, was told they had 24 hours to move, right? I did a video about this, you may remember. They moved to Google, and then Google not only refused to service them, but technically seized their domain, putting a client hold on their domain so they couldn't move it. Now, why am I bringing this up? Because I have said several times in the past you know, few days that, make no mistake, the laws and precedent used against your rivals will one day be used against you. Germany just uh, raided and shut down an indie media website in Germany. They claim that it's linked to domestic extremism, to left-wing violence and extremism. And this is coming about seven weeks. I think the G20 was about seven weeks ago. So many people believe this is in response to the massive black bloc and massive rioting and protests seen in Hamburg that the government has decided to crack down. And now, something interesting about it is that a lot of people claim that the, the site was only allowed to exist because it served as, you know, sort of a hub for intel for the authorities. But regardless, they've been shut down as well. When we look at Patreon, right, Jack Conti, he didn't just shut down Lauren Southern, he eventually did shut down It's Going Down. You know, It's Going Down is a far left, you know, militant website. And they claim that what they do is media. They're reporting things, they're rehosting things, but the accusation is um, against them was more that their articles spoke in the first person. So it sounded more like affiliation, not reporting. I, I've been seeing a lot of this. The right and the left, each claiming that they're being abused more than the other side. But you really can look for examples and see there's accusations that Google searches would push people away from socialist, communist, or other far left ideology and content. So it's not just affecting the right, it's not just affecting the left, it really will affect everybody. And we are heading for a terrifying future. So let's think about where it goes from here. Lauren Southern was banned, they claimed that she was gonna do something wrong. It's Going Down was banned, they claimed they're gonna do something wrong. We heard that Airbnb, Uber, PayPal, GoFundMe, they've banned people for attending the Unite the Right rally, for being white nationalists or white supremacists. In the instance of Airbnb, it's an inconvenience. In the, in the instance of Uber, it's an inconvenience, right? You can still get a cab, you can still drive around, you can still buy your own car. GoFundMe, well, you know, you're gonna do a one-off campaign, so it's kind of an inconvenience. There are, there are alternative services. PayPal is where it gets scarier because PayPal is a massive payment processing company. And if you wanna donate to somebody, you need an account. If you want to do regular business, say you want to sell t-shirts and you want to accept money through PayPal, that's where we start getting a little bit more serious. But there are alternatives to PayPal. So long as there is market competition, we don't have a whole lot to worry about. By all means, ban someone. An alternative could pop right up. But now where it gets a little scary is when we talk about Cassandra Fairbanks, who was recently banned from OkCupid for being one of these speakers scheduled in Boston. Now, everyone's accusing all of those speakers of being white supremacists, of Nazis or whatever, and I can assure you Cassandra Fairbanks is not a Nazi. I, don't, I can't even believe I have to say this, right? Jeez, she was a Bernie supporter. But let me, let me make sure I can, I can sort of marry these ideas, right? So I, I, I mentioned the websites in the beginning. I'm talking a little bit about being banned from social platforms. And this is all leading to something that gets a whole lot scarier. Because what I'm about to tell you isn't speculation. It's going to happen. Mark my words. So recently Amazon, you may remember this, they bought Whole Foods and they did this promo video where a person walks in with their phone and they start tapping things and they, as they load their cart and there's no cashiers, you just walk in, you grab some items, you tap them on your phone and you walk right out. Sounds so easy and convenient, doesn't it? But I'd imagine if you were gonna go shopping there, you might need an Amazon account, right? I mean, Amazon is a massive retailer and if you wanna go shop in one of their now physical grocery locations, Whole Foods, you're probably going to need to sign up with Amazon. And hopefully your opinion isn't the wrong one, and hopefully Amazon doesn't decide simply because you attended an event or were seen in a photograph that you should have your account terminated because then you can't go grocery shopping. But it won't stop there. Think about all the accounts you use. Maybe it's something like Google where you use one account for a bunch of different services. 
You know, we hear that Twitter banned someone like Milo Yiannopoulos. They claim that he was harassing some celebrity, Leslie Jones, but a lot of people, you know, they say it's not true. And the whole thing's a, a big fight, a big political debate. Regardless, Milo Yiannopoulos is no longer on Twitter, a social media platform. And they claim that they won't support hate speech, so they remove him. But what about something like PlayStation, right? I, I'm doing that because I'm pointing at my PlayStation. If you want to use PlayStation, when you turn it on, you have to sign in to your account. And that account is a social media profile. You can message people, you can add friends. But what happens if PlayStation then decides, we don't like your opinion and we're going to remove you too? Okay, so where this, where this is all tying in, if we're going to see the government try and take over websites, if we're going to see major corporations take over websites, shut them down, kick people off, and now we're moving into the realm where these massive tech companies, they're going to have the internet and everything. If you want to go grocery shopping at Whole Foods, eventually you'll probably need an Amazon account. Better hope they don't suspend you and you agree to their terms of service. But then we can also think about how the software used in most of our tech devices, you don't own. You don't have a right to use it. So think about this. You buy a coffee maker and, uh, or no, actually let's look at like a Keurig, right? Because they have digital rights management on their Keurig cups, you know, the little things you put in and, and it makes you coffee. Well, what happens in the future when they tell you to sign in for new benefits or you're required to sign in in order to use their system? A lot of these companies want you to sign in because Often they will sell your data to some advertiser or some other company. So they, they make it mandatory. And then if you have the wrong opinion, will they remove you from your coffee maker? You're going to wake up one day and it's going to say on your, on your coffee, you have been suspended from, from drinking coffee or for your account with, you know, Samsung, Sony, Amazon, whatever has been terminated due to violations of our hate speech terms and conditions. Now you can't even make a cup of coffee. Think about the future of say self-driving cars or software in, in cars in general. As everything slowly starts to require you to have an account to use it, and we're seeing people have their accounts, sites, or other digital rights suspended and revoked because of wrong opinion, we're going to end up in a future where people will be entirely ostracized from society, but not only that, no one is going to speak up or speak out. Think about how many devices you own have microphones, have cameras. I mean, hell, my PlayStation has a microphone. My PlayStation has a camera. PlayStation, it's crazy. One day we're gonna find out that the coffee maker's got a microphone in it because you can voice activate your coffee maker. You can say, hey, coffee maker, medium, 12 ounce, dark roast, and it'll kick on. Oh, but your coffee maker heard you say something bad. You violate the terms and conditions. There's some reports now that Alexa and you know the Echo, these automatic vo assistants, are actually recording what people say. So let's let's wrap this up, make it a bit more concise, and look straight into the future. People have already had their lives destroyed for stupid tweets, right? People make mistakes, pencils have erasers, but the collective outrage machine that is the internet will not forgive anyone. And often something as stupid as a one sentence joke can become a worldwide trend resulting in someone losing their friends, their family, their jobs. It can be truly devastating. People are going to be terrified about what they can or cannot say in public. There's been instances where somebody made a joke to one of their friends and it was overheard at a conference resulting in people losing their jobs. I don't want to reopen old wounds so I won't reference that specifically with citation but these things happen often. Cassandra Fairbanks being banned from OkCupid okay for just being a speaker in Boston. And people mischaracterized what that event was about. Was it a Nazi rally? No. Were there uh, potential white nationalists scheduled to speak? Yes. Augustus Invictus, I believe, is a white nationalist, but I think he might have been the only one. Then you had some right-wing personalities, some Republicans, so it was a bit mixed. But they just call everyone who went a Nazi. 40,000 people stood outside that rally screaming Nazi. And in response, Cassandra Fairbanks, as I mentioned before, gets her, gets her account suspended. We're gonna walk into a future where someone's just going to see you walking past some conservative event and you'll be in that photo and they'll say, oh, that's one of them, he's there at that Nazi rally. And then are you no longer able to go grocery shopping because Amazon suspended your account? Will your PlayStation no longer turn on? Can you no longer log onto the internet? Will your phone shut off? I'm bringing this up because it's early and maybe there is hope that this kind of future will not come about that maybe will be reasonable and will draw the line at what is and is not acceptable in terms of 
shutting down someone's services and utilities. But what happens in a future where these companies continue to grow and become monopolies, duopolies, oligopolies, and they can just decide, you know what? You as an individual are a risk to our business, so to appease the masses, you have been removed. Now you find yourself homeless. You can't sign in to certain websites, you don't have an email address. It's early now, and we can spot these things happening. These companies that have banned people for being too far in one direction. While it's their right to do so, you have to realize what that leads to. And when governments and corporations are shutting down websites that are too extreme, you have to realize that when those extremes are gone, there is still an extreme. And it's going to slowly move inward until the only opinion left is a subtle, I don't know, I hope everyone is happy, please don't be offended. Some, something like that, right? But let me know what you think. Comment below, and we'll keep the conversation going. If you like the video, click the like button. Make sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram at TimCast. You can support my work by going to TimCast.com forward slash donate and giving whatever you'd like or nothing at all. My videos are always free and available. I've got a ton of work to do, as you can see. So this has just been a little quick tidbit, and I've got some plans, some stories I'll be chasing down. So stay tuned. New videos every day at 4 p.m. The quality is going to get way, way better. I'll see you all then.